Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India's NSA takes jai by China and Pakistan at SCO meet. Pashtuns hold anti-Pakistan protest in Geneva, demand UN intervention to stop atrocities. And World Bank says Bangladesh must work with neighbours to cut pollution. And now for all the details, India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Wednesday told the meeting of SCO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, that members of the grouping should respect territorial integrity and not seek unilateral military superiority in adjacent regions and apparent swipe at China. Speaking at the SCO level NSA meeting in New Delhi, Doval also spoke at length about the challenge of terrorism and said any terrorist act, regardless of its motivation, is unjustifiable. In a wheeled attack on Pakistan, he said all countries should fulfill their obligations under counter-terrorism cooperation protocols. The meeting was joined by the Secretary of Russia's Security Council and senior officials of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. Officials of China and Pakistan took part virtually. Terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and its financing are amongst the most serious threats to international peace and security. Any act of terrorism, regardless of its motivation, is unjustifiable. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Tuesday appealed to the parliament to act against his predecessor Imran Khan over acquisitions that Khan's opposition PTI party was involved in violence that erupted when police tried to arrest him for alleged corruption. In his speech, Sharif asked lawmakers if they have ever witnessed law enforcement officers getting attacked with petrol bombs when they are going to serve a court summon to someone. He added action needs to be taken immediately to save Pakistan. Some of Sharif's ministers have also called for a ban on PTI, but it was not clear whether the government was seeking this from parliament. Sharif's government has alleged Khan supporters had Islamist militants among them. The clashes have brought a new flare-up of political instability to the South Asian nation, which is in the midst of crippling economic crisis. Pakistan was left red-faced as Pashtun activists highlighted its atrocities against the community outside the UN office in Geneva. The activists urged the world body to intervene to stop the rights violations by Pakistan, a report. Members of PTM, the Pashtun Tahafuz movement, held an anti-Pakistan protest outside the UN building in Geneva on Tuesday to urge the world body to intervene in stopping human rights violations against the Pashtun community. The participants, including the Afghan Pashtuns, decried Pakistan for supporting terror groups and using them to subjugate the rights of Pashtuns. They also held a seminar in which they raised concern over targeted killings of innocent Pashtuns in so-called military operations, ethnic stereotyping and rising incidents of enforced disappearances. Pakistan is a country who supports the terrorism and they are creator of the terrorism in the Middle East Asia, uh, especially uh, for Pashtun people as we see from last 70 years they are trying to have a problem, uh, kind of the problem to find there and they are killing the Pashtun people by different names. Activists have long alleged that Pakistan army functions along with militant groups in Pashtun-dominated tribal areas and indiscriminately uses brute force against Pashtuns. Despite protest internationally, Pakistani media remains mum about their plight. The Amnesty International in its latest report has claimed that since the Taliban seized power in Afghanistan in 2021, at least 237 people have been killed without trial. 
the 416 page report the rights organization has discussed afghanistan situation in the past 2 years and the generic assessment indicates that the human rights situation is rapidly deteriorating in the country from november 18 to december 16 more than 100 people have been flogged in public in different parts of the country and an alleged criminal was also publicly executed in fara province the execution was described as a hateful act by the international community. The transfer to power from Western-backed government to the Taliban saw many changes in the way institutions were working for the past 20 years. The Taliban has rolled back women's rights advances and media freedom, revoking the efforts on gender equality and freedom of speech in the country. The World Bank has said Bangladesh needs better coordination with neighbouring South Asian countries in its quest for cleaner air. In a report released on Tuesday, the global lender ranked Bangladesh capital Dhaka among the 10 most polluted cities in the world with the concentration of fine particulate matter in some areas of the country's largest city as much as 20 times higher than World Health Organization standards. The report states that air pollution is also causing about 20% of the total number of premature deaths in Bangladesh. It mentions the pollution is not limited to national boundaries and gets trapped in large air sheds. The report identifies six such air sheds in South Asia and said it was critical for Bangladesh, Nepal, India and Pakistan who share a common area to work together to combat the problem. India held joint military drills with 25 African countries in Western Pune on Wednesday to bluster defence ties and facilitate cooperation between armies of the participating nations. The exercise took place on the sidelines of the premier of the India-Africa Army Chiefs Conclave. African and Indian soldiers were seen participating in gun drills and mock scenarios of closing in on enemies. The exercise comes as a part of initiatives taken towards maritime security, peacekeeping and counter-insurgency operations between India and the African countries. Indian Army Chief Manoj Pandey said that the drill was preceded by 10 days of rigorous training. Uh, we have asked not to have the Indian government uh, through uh, the chief of the army for having uh, given us uh, this opportunity to come and share uh, our experiences, also analyze the security, you know, the, set, the complex security environment and threats, uh, which uh, face us globally. Hindu devotees across India on Wednesday offered prayers and performed rituals to celebrate Ashtami, the auspicious eighth day of the Chaitra Navratri festival. The nine-day-long festival is dedicated to the nine forms of Durga, the goddess of power. Hindu devotees across India thronged temples since early morning on Wednesday to mark Ashtami, the auspicious eighth day of the Chaitra Navratri festival. The festival is dedicated to the nine forms of Durga, the goddess of power. Huge crowds were witnessed in northern Haridwar city where devotees stood in queues patiently waiting for their chance to offer prayers. On this day, young girls are regarded as devis or goddesses and are invited to homes and are served a special offering of black gram and sweets. During Navratri, Hindus only eat vegetarian food and some even fast for all the nine days. It is believed that during this period, the devotees must keep their mind, body and thoughts pure. The festival is observed twice a year, once in the beginning of the summers and the other in the beginning of the winters. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.